Hi, I'm Brian Scourin. I'm an account executive here at Neospire, and today I'm going to be talking about the 12 requirements of PCI DSS compliance. So what is PCI compliance? Basically the payment card industry data security standard, that's what people are referring to when they talk about PCI compliance, is a uh, security standard that's divided into 250 security controls. Uh, those controls themselves are separated into, into 12 sections and those controls cover technology and procedural operations. Um, PCI DSS it was developed by the five major payment brands Visa, MasterCard, American Express, Discover and JCB. And the important thing to understand about PCI is that regardless of how many transactions you do, regardless of how much money you process through your sites, every merchant of every size is required to comply with PCI DSS mm -hmm. in its entirety. Um, so, you know, what is the entirety of PCI DSS? Well, you can reach it at the following URL and actually download the actual standard from the Security Standards Council and uh, read through every requirement on your own. So, as I mentioned, uh, the document itself is about 75 pages. Uh, it goes from requirement 1.1 to requirement 12.9.1, um, and all over it, it's going to say PCI Security Standards Council. That's how you're going to know you're in the right place. There's a lot of uh, documents on that site, and uh, they apply to different things. What you're going to be concerned about as a PCI merchant is the, uh, the da data security standard. So we talk about 12 requirements of PCI. Uh, what does that exactly mean? Basically, even though there are 250 security controls, the requirements of PCI are separated into 12 categories. And those briefly are as follows. Install and maintain a firewall configuration to protect cardholder data. Do not use vendor supplied defaults for systems, passwords, and other security parameters. Protect stored cardholder data. Encrypt transmission of cardholder data across open public networks. Use and regularly update antivirus software or programs. Develop and maintain secure systems and applications. Restrict access to cardholder data by business need to know. Assign a unique ID to each person with computer access. Restrict physical access to cardholder data and track and monitor all access to network resources and cardholder data. Uh, lastly, regularly test security systems and processes and maintain a policy that addresses information security for all personnel. So when you're looking at the PCI DSS and you're looking at the 12 requirements, it's easy to think this is pretty straightforward and there's only 12 requirements here. Why was I mentioning 250 security controls earlier? Well, it's actually much more in depth than that. Every single requirement has lots of very specific, very detailed sub-requirements that tell you exactly how you need to implement that security category and that security control. So let's take, for example, the first requirement. Install and maintain a firewall to protect cardholder data. That seems pretty straightforward. Pretty much anybody who is, uh, has any sort of website or is accepting credit cards over the internet is naturally going to have a, a, a firewall. That's just table stakes for security. Well. You would think, looking at that, that you're covered because you have a firewall. Well, actually, it's not so easy. If you look at requirement one, and actually requirement 1.1, uh, it directs you to establish firewall and router configuration standards that include the following. And then following that is 1.1.1, 1.1.2, 1.1.3, and on and on. There are actually very, very specific directives put in place onto how you need to configure your firewall. And for every single requirement in the PCI list, there are many sub-requirements that are very detailed, very specific, and tell you exactly how you need to implement your uh, security controls. As you can see, this requirement keeps going on all the way down to 1.2.1a, um, and you know perhaps even beyond that. So to the small business owner who's looking at the PCI DSS, they might be asking themselves, looking at all these requirements, can it really be this hard? I mean, really, with this many requirements, 250 security controls, how can they expect everybody to do that? And the answer, unfortunately, is yes, it is that, that difficult. Uh, the PCI DSS is what it is, and those requirements apply to anybody, regardless of if they're doing 10 credit card transactions or 100 million credit card transactions. The difference and the key behind it is that each merchant has to validate a different way based on what merchant category that they're in. Uh, what this usually means for small merchants is they see this and, and realize 
it's going to cost me a lot of money and a lot of time and resources to implement all of these controls. And there's a big misconception out there that, uh, that smaller merchants don't have to implement all of these controls. Um, and really, what it all comes back to is, for the small merchants and the medium merchants, what it comes back to is how they're required to validate their compliance. So Visa and the other, uh, and the other members of the Security Standards Council have separated people out into different merchant categories based on the number of transactions that they do per year. And each merchant level has different ways of validating their compliance. Uh, without going into all of those details, here is a link where you can, uh, can find on your own and get a suggestion as to what sort of validation requirements you might be subject to as a merchant. So in summary, there are 12 categories of PCI DSS compliance. There are actually 250 security controls and requirements that you need to abide by for compliance. And if you ever need any help or assistance with those requirements from a hosting perspective, feel free to call us here at Neospire and myself or one of my associates will be happy to help.